Dominic Moisi, welcome to WPC TV. You are a great political thinker. You are a co founder of IFRI, and also I think you are now um, a professor of government at King's College London. So let me pick your brains on the geopolitical situation of the world, in particular the Middle East. How do you see things developing over the next year and then a bit further along, five years? And if you can do this in three minutes, you're a genius. Well, when the Arab Spring started, the feeling, the hope was that European ideas, Western ideas, were going to prevail. Democracy and the rule of law were coming to the Middle East. Today, there is a slight interrogation and uh, a major worry. Could the reverse be true? It's not Western ideals that are coming to the Middle East. It's Western boundaries that are about to be erased from the Middle East. What we are witnessing in front of us is the possibility that uh, the balance of power that was established starting in the minds of European in 1916 with the Sykes-Picot Agreement yes. is about to disappear in front of our eyes. So it's not the spread of democracy, it's the spread of fragmentation. But if you have the end of the Sykes-Picot lines, then that implies the fragmentation of Syria, Lebanon, Israel stroke Palestine. When you start there, you, you carry on. So yeah. We, we, where does the fragmentation end? Well, the Sykes Pico. Oh, sorry to interrupt. You. Couldn't you make the same argument about Africa? Yet in Africa, every government seems determined to keep its boundaries intact, the colonial boundaries, which otherwise make no real sense. Isn't it the same in a way in the Middle East? I think the challenge we are faced with right now in Syria, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Libya, is one of an immense nature because it has implication, not only for the Middle East, as you said, but potentially also for Africa. Artificial boundaries that were created, a line on the sand, to quote the famous formula, were kept because by the end of the day, everybody was terrorized of what could happen if suddenly you were starting to challenge them. But now, in reality, is Iraq an entity? Is Syria an entity? Is Libya an entity? Formally, the boundaries are still there. But in reality, they, rec they, they, they correspond. You already have separation. Exactly. You, you have a Kurdistan. You, you, are, you, you have Sunni areas. You have Shia areas. Absolutely. So the, the process of fragmentation has started. And it's very interesting because in a way, if you remember the process of analogies by which we studied the Arab Spring, yeah. Arab Spring, so it's the spring of people, Europe 1848, yeah. uh, the attempt to democratize uh, Europe. Then you have the comparison with 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and now, what is the comparison that is coming? The Balkanization of the Middle East. It is the Middle East. 1914. Or, or in some ways, <clears throat> the, what happened in the former Yugoslavia with the explosion in so many states. One final question, um, and switching the emphasis rather. French foreign policy has been quite activist under François Hollande. How do you see French foreign policy developing? Well, it has been activist for a series of reasons. One, it corresponds to tradition. Uh, one could say in Cartesian term, uh, I intervene 
therefore I exist. This is the motto of French foreign policy. And we intervene more today because the region in which we have a little specificity, a comparative advantage, is collapsing in front of our eyes in countries like Mali or Central Africa. And in other parts of the world, in the Middle East, one can sense the Middle Eastern fatigue of the United States. So it's the encounter between those three phenomena, French tradition of intervention, opportunities, necessities to intervene, and a little less America, not only in, in the Middle East, but I would say probably in the world. Dominique Moisy, thank you very much for your perspective. Thank you.